Hey guys, I'm bringing back to you episode 2 of my Discord.js bot development series. If you watched episode 1 or you haven't, I will start there and in that episode we got started with developer environment which is Visual Studio, Discord.js, talking about the library and some of the things you should know before getting to it. And we talked about sample ESLint which linters help kind of check the code, make sure there aren't any errors with just overall look and structure of the code. And we got the bot up and running off the ground where we set up two basic events, the ready event and the message event. And if you know, I type in ping, it will respond with pong. So this episode, we're going to talk about securing your bot token, which I mentioned in the previous episode, you're going to want to secure your bot token. And we're going to talk about how to secure it via two different methods. First one being a config.json file, and the second one being environment variables. So I'm going to show you what both of those mean, but I'll tell you why you should keep your bot token secure. And that is, your bot cannot function without the token. And the token is the most crucial part of a bot. If someone gets that token, it's basically the same as giving someone the keys to your house and you walk in away and letting them do what they want. And you being held accountable for that because if someone gets access to your bot token and they load it into their own bot that does malicious things, you're going to be the one held accountable, not the person who got access to the bot token. So you're going to want to keep this token secure. And this token that you see here, I'm resetting it at the end of this video. So it's not going to be able to be used by the time you see this video on YouTube. But if something does happen, you reset your token just for security reasons. But for the most part, if you just take the basic steps to keep your token secured, you'll be fine. The only time you should really ever be sharing a token is maybe if you're working in a team environment and you're the, you're the only people who should know the token. But Storing your token in config files or environment variables ensures that you can share a code with others and they won't see that crucial information. And not only can you put tokens in these files, you can also put database details, other API tokens, and any other information that you don't want others to see right up front. So first I'm going to show you how to set up a config.json file. And what you want to do is, here in Visual Studio, you want to right click on your bots folder and click new file. And you can call it whatever you want, bot config, config, tokens.json. Just in this case, I'm gonna call it config.json. I'm gonna put a few things in here. So once you create the JSON file, you can make sure you open and close it with curly brackets. This is how you define a JSON file. When you're entering stuff in the JSON file, it usually has a key and then a value. So the first thing I'm gonna put in here is the bot token. I can call this token. And I'm gonna get the token from here. And that's how I can paste in the token. Now the next thing I'm gonna put is the owner. And this designates the bot owner. Now you can put an array of different bot owners, but here I'm just gonna put one. And that's gonna be my ID. So if you have developer mode enabled in Discord, I'll show you how to do that real quick. You go over to appearance, scroll down, and you want to check developer mode. This is very useful to have as a developer as you can right click on messages or users and you can get, or channels as well, you can get information about that specific element. I'm not sure exactly what to call it. But here I'm just going to right click on my username and I'm going to copy my user ID. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm not using arrays here, so I'm just going to do that. And this is all you need. Actually, I'm going to add one more thing. And then this is all you will need. And here I am going to put a prefix. Now, we'll talk more about prefixes in the next couple episodes, but I'm going to put it here just so I know where it is at the start. So I'm just going to make that my prefix. And then that's your config.json. Now, all you have to do is require this, import this config.json require into your project. And to do that, simply do this if you want to get the prefix. You can just do prefix equals require 
then make sure you put a dot and then forward slash to get that file. If you just do this, it won't work. It won't know where it's searching for. If you do this, it'll know where it's searching for. It's kind of weird how the file tree works, but it's a basic mistake if you make something like if you put two dots or no dots or, but this is all you need to do is to require that file. And then here, if you just type in token, that's how you can import your token and use that token. So what you want to do is we'll just go start off the bat. Invalid token was provided. Okay, um, give me one moment to fix this issue. Alright guys, I actually fixed the issue and it's because, well, I was going to show you how to kind of go about doing this in the next step, but I might as well talk about it now. When I first started out, I had to individually require different keys from the config.json. And then they all found out actually with, um, I think it's called ESMA6 or like, it's more like the update like syntax of um, JavaScript. I found that I can actually, you know, require multiple things from a specific file. So I can do token, and I, I can set up like an object. So I can do token, then prefix, and then owner, different things like that. But token here, and then it just grabs token from the JSON file, the body of the JSON file. And really, this is all you need to do to get started. So this is how to do config files. Now, config files might not always be the best thing to use, and in my experience, it hasn't always been the best thing to use because it kind of makes things a bit tedious between production and development environments. I always will have to like change a bunch of things before I push my bot into production, and it just gets very tedious. And that's where environment variables have come in to the rescue. Also, another reason why environment variables are good because it works it integrates into different applications, such as if you're hosting your bot on Heroku. Heroku, you need environment variables to get the bot token and other information. So you can basically import different environment variables into Heroku. And if you have like process.env that that environment variable in your code, it'll work from the environment variables set in Heroku. That's just an example. We're not going to talk about Heroku right now, but I just kind of I think you should get the gist. So I'm going to stop the bot. I'm going to go ahead and start talking about getting environment variables and how to use those. So start out with environment variables. You're going to want to install a package called .env-flow. Now you can install the normal .env and it works the same as .env-flow, but the reason why I use .env-flow because it allows me to use multiple environment files. I use this in all my bots. I have a development.env.development file and a .env.production file. And this helps me so much where I have to make minimal changes before pushing things out to production. And I can separate when I'm working on my development bot and I can make sure it doesn't mess up the code for my production bot. So just like I showed you in the previous episode how to install an npm package, all you have to do is npm I then dot env dash flow. Now while I was installing, kind of like how you require the config.json, you would do the same with dot env. So, well, it's a little bit different. You don't exactly have to assign a variable to the import package. All you have to do is type in require env flow then config. That's the first step. Next step is you have to create a .env file. Now, I'm not going to go here and make multiple files in this case, but I will show you how to use multiple files in the future. But for now, I'm just going to create a .env file. And everything that I have here in my env file, my config.json, I'm going to move into my env file. So. Give me a moment to update this all. Okay, 
So I updated the song and I moved the token, my owner, my ID, and the bot prefix here from the config.json file to that .env file. Now if you want to access these variables, I'm going to show you exactly how to. And in this case, I'm going to create a new object, a JavaScript object. You can store keys and different properties and values in the object. If you want to read more about it, I will link more information about JavaScript objects in the description. But I'm going to make one here. I'm going to call this config. And here it's just going to be simple key value pairs. So first I'm going to require in the token. And if you want to get a environment variable, all you have to do is type in process. This will process.env. So this accesses the environment variables for the node process that is running. And then to get the specific environment variable, all you have to do is type in token. Just how you typed in in the .env file. Then you want to get owner, process.env.owner. And prefix process.env.prefix just like that and then all I have to do is config.token if you start the bot you're good to go so like I said before with environment variables and environment files it helps a lot between the flow between production and environment and it helps securing your your bot token, other database details, other API tokens, and sharing your code. Because say you want to share your code with a friend, you know you don't want to have like your MySQL Mongo database details exposed in this file and your bot token. But you can just simply you know copy paste this and share it for others to see, just like that, without any worries of your information being out there up for grabs and for malicious people to get access to that information. So for the rest of this series, I'm going to specifically use a .env file because I have moved away for the most part from config files and actually I kind of done it differently is instead of having all the settings from my environment variable .env file inside the app.js, I actually created a new file called config.js and put everything in there but I'm not going to get into that right now but that's kind of what I did to help me but I'm going to wrap it up here next episode I plan to talk about more events and how to set up a basic command handler so you can start using a prefix and creating some different commands so as always if you want to stay tuned with the series you are free to subscribe if you like the video please leave a like I would appreciate that and even more importantly, please leave comments in the description on how I can improve since again, it's been a while since I have done YouTube and I'm rusty and it feels weird, but I know if I keep at this, I will improve. Guys, I actually forgot, but remember, I do have a Discord server, Nerd Cave Development, and this is the main hub for my Discord bots, but as well, I want it to be the main hub for my YouTube series that I'm starting. So if you have any issues with your code, and you think I can help you, then please, I would love to have you join and I can probably maybe help you for the most part if I something I don't know that I can probably help step you through the process. But I'm not here to hold hands throughout the whole entire way. I'm expecting you to know some knowledge with JavaScript and Node.js and that you know your way a little bit around the docs. But I will be more than happy to help you in general. So the invite link, will A, be up on the screen right about now, and B, it will be down in the description. So go ahead and join, and you can just come here in the Discord bot help, and just ping me with what's going on, and if I'm available, I'll be more than happy to help you out. And even other people might be able to help you out too, but I'm just hoping to grow a real community here of developers who are here to help each other grow and just do some really cool things. So. I'm ending off here guys, thank you for watching, if you did, and I will see you guys in the next one.